Thanks. Um, as I was introduced, I'm the coordinator of a regional sustainable agriculture working group, and maybe some of you are familiar with the SOG. There's one in each of the four major regions as they're described. And uh, 17 years ago when the Northeast SOG was formed, we understood from the get-go that we were really talking about a food and farming system. It wasn't just about agriculture. And in fact, that's our, our, our founding principle. In 1996, we gathered uh, our land-grant colleagues to uh, work with them to identify and uh, encourage sustainable agriculture and food systems programming. So we've been at this for a long time, and I'm very heartened by um, the invitation here to talk in terms of regions and regionalism. Um, we've done quite a bit of work on that in the Northeast, thinking about regions. We've done a concept paper on regional approaches to farm and food policy. We created a Northeast Farm Bill agenda for the last Farm Bill. We've put together a comprehensive analysis. It's incomplete, but it's based on the data that we could find, understanding our food and farm system. And finally, put together um, a sort of uh, policy tool. Maybe you could call it a set of indicators to understand how policies at every level impact uh, the regional food system from a regional perspective. So it's thinking that we've done for a while, and I'm really encouraged that the institutions here are welcoming this perspective and also um, partnering with groups on the ground, such as mine and some of the others here, to look at the research uh, issues. I want to step uh, up a little bit and talk about why uh, I'm so personally interested in regionalism and why I'm heartened by that perspective here. Um, regionalism I see as a framework that's really uh, critical for food and farm system thinking. Uh, at minimum, it addresses regional characteristics and needs and also fosters regional approaches and solutions, both in terms of identity and propinquity. We understand who we are by where we are. This is a very place-based orientation. Regionalism also um, encourages responsive public policies. In other words, one size does not fit all, and there are several examples in terms of biofuels, in terms of conservation programs, and so on, where regional applications can be very different. Regionalism also encourages a focus on equitable, appropriate, and flexible solutions. And again, there are many examples in the policy and also the um, economic development arena. Some of you might be familiar with Michael Porter's business clusters, which in one, one way of looking at it is really place-based. You may be familiar with government authorities or economic development entities that are also regionally focused. So this notion of, of region and place is a really compelling. Um, why for the food system? Well, obviously because agriculture is in fact place-dependent and place-based, and it encourages a, a system's thinking. Regions can be defined in various ways. They are flexible, their boundaries are flexible, and they can be nested, and also we need to recognize that they're interdependent. Uh, where I come from in Massachusetts, um, Cape Cod sees itself as a region, New England, and Cape Cod is nested in New England, which sees itself as a region, and New England is nested in the Northeast. Similarly, the Chesapeake Bay sees itself as part of the Mid-Atlantic, which also sees itself as part of the Northeast. So you might individually begin to, or be familiar with thinking about how you place yourself and your food system uh, on the land. Um, another really important aspect to me is that it scales us up from thinking about local and community-based food systems, which are important, but um, I'm, I've always been concerned on think about Fred Magdoff's um, notion about being the flea on the elephant that we really have to think about how to not only scale up from the local and community base, but also appropriately scale down from the global and national. Some of you may know the paper about the local trap, and I think about that, especially because local can tend to be conflated with small size, direct, and fresh products, and that's not all of what we're talking about. Well, so, one minute. I've got one minute? Yeah. Okay, well, I've got a lot more, but I think <laughs> that, <laughs> um, Without even talking about the Northeast, then, I would really want to drive home the point about uh, regional perspective. 
We're talking about scale and distance. We're talking about place and branding. We're talking about a sense of connection that really enables cross-sector relationships, which is what we've really been talking about here and what we need in order to um, make the complicated changes that we're talking about. So our goals really in thinking about regionalism have to do with control and choice and the use and allocation of resources. Um, our personal goals in the Northeast are to keep production and consumption as close to home as possible. That doesn't mean that we want to be or think we can be self-sufficient, but it really does mean uh, looking at a regional level to encourage uh, self-reliance, to uh, understand our capacity and to meet it to the fullest extent that we can, to reduce transportation energy, certainly, and to keep our economic dollars uh, close to home as well. Uh, finally, I would say that uh, regionalism, because it's place-based, is resonant with people in terms of building the movement that we all need, um, not only within our academic institutions, but on the ground. And I'll leave it at that and see if we can come back to some of the other aspects later. Thank Sounds you. Good.